Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F1 2021 League Racing video. Um, this is PSGL round 5 around Budapest after uh, a week break um, from that uh, controversial last race. So um, unfortunately we didn't win that race of course, penalty did not get revoked. Um, but I took that uh, week break from the league um, to practice a lot around here and um, aiming to get our first win of the season because we still have not won this season and get ourselves into the championship fight because we are currently like 19 points behind as you can see here after uh, our penalty in France which costs a lot of points of course uh, instead of getting that 16 we got 10 points and uh, then Shanaka got two extra so that's that uh, difference of finishing an extra position behind your uh, championship rival, which uh, is tough, but you know, we're definitely not out of this yet. Uh, Barry Boramant is, uh, I feel like, uh, the faster one of the top five um, compared to Seneca, but Seneca has just been up there, you know, he's just been uh, performing the race really well and just getting podiums, apart from Monaco, of course, where he had that zero uh, result, but other than just P2 and win, uh, helped him get up the lead of the championship but there's still a long way to go and as I said I've really been fired up after last week um, after last week's penalty and I've just been practicing basically almost every day uh, for this race because as you can imagine I was not very happy um, I wanted to take PSG a bit chilled after an intense uh, every esports season but um, this last race has really motivated me to practice and win this title um, again so um, that's why I'm uh, absolutely fired up for this race this is our first Q1 run um, so we just need to be top top 15 to get into um, Q2 uh, earlier on in the session there was rain so there's no point going out so this is my only qualifying lap I'm aiming for so we can set an extra set of softs for maybe Q3 or Q2 depending and um, yeah, we really got to aim for a front row lockout um, together with my teammate Jake Benham so we can control the race from there as it's really hard to overtake around here as you see um, so last year from the real F1 it's not easy even if you have a really fast car um, even though it's a little bit less on the F1 game because there's less dirty air it's still um, yeah, it's just not easy to follow around, especially if the car ahead of you has DRS as well. It becomes really hard and you really need a massive pace advantage to overtake around here. So I feel like track position is going to be crucial. Um, with that, qualifying is going to be crucial as well. We're about to head into the final sector of this Q1 lap. And it's just being tidy, you know, not pushing crazy boundaries. I felt like, um, especially me and Barry had a pace advantage in qualifying to the rest of the field around here. So, just taking it safe, not doing any crazy things, not invalidating, um, not using these tires too much in case we need them later on. And going through the final corner now, very safe again, opening the DRS up to the line. It's going to be a 114.078, and that's going to be more than enough to get into Q2. So, going to bring it back to the pits now, and um, yeah, save that set of tires in case we need it later on. You can see Josh in P3, Jake in P4, Danny Bresne. His home track in P5, Alvaro Carrot on P6. And the shocker of that Q1 session was that Shalaka Clay, the guy P1 in the standings, is out of the session. And this is a huge opportunity for us to get uh, a big chunk back out of that lead from him. And you can see here Q2, and we're going for a medium run. And you can see in the top right, still seven minutes remaining. So in case I'm not happy with my medium run, I can always um, go for a soft run later on into turn one went a bit wide there as I just understeered and it probably cost me some minimum and exit speed but luckily turn two I think officially turn three it was um, was pretty good and now we're gonna go into the second sector uh, on the mediums you tend to overheat a little bit less fast and that's what you want in the race as on a qualifying lap you're gonna be quite a bit slower than the softs um, but the softs are just so extremely fast for a few laps that over a 10 lap course the mediums are going to be faster and that's why we want to start on those mediums um, because we want um, those mediums with a heavy car as that's when you tend to overheat even faster 
um, because there's more load going through the tire, so more energy, which means uh, more heat. And that's why we want those uh, mediums. Of course, a little bit lower wear as well with the harder rubber coming into play. And into the final sector, backhand stepping out a little bit into the final corner. A bit wide, but that means we're going to get a good exit. Opening the DRS up to the line, and it's going to be a 115.141. And I'm happy with that, because that's my PB um, on the mediums. Uh, Joshi Doe with a 114.9 on the medium, so he was the fastest of the medium runners. Um, Alessio Di Capo and Barry Berman both slightly faster than us on the mediums. So um, we managed to get through, which was a rain. And, you know, also um, managed to not have to do two laps. Barry, I think, had to back out of the first one and had to go again. So he will have a little bit more tire wear. And that might help us at the start of the race. So, um, happy with that Q2 performance there. First Q3 run. Um, we still have two new sets of tires, so I'm gonna be using those, of course. Both of them in Q3. As I said earlier on, track um, position oh, is very important. And as you can hear there, I was not very happy with my first Q3 lap. As we were two tenths behind Barry, we were still P2 though. So um, our aim was that front row and lockout with Jake. But unfortunately Jake did not manage to set a lap in Q2. So he was out. And now starting our last Q3 lap. This one is going to be important. You can see Danny Resne has gone ahead of us. Joshi Doe goes ahead as well with a 113.861. But I was confident I could do better than that. See, going through turn one. Big game to our Delta, almost one tenth up as we go into turn three. And this one is very hard, easy to lock up the left front, but we managed to get a front in nicely and get a good exit. And you can see on the Delta, 1.4 tenths up as we go through the middle or into the middle sector. Two thousands up on Barry Berman's um, banker lap. So it's going to be interesting to see how much faster Barry can go. We're almost two tenths up through that right hand into the chicane now. Very easy to get this one wrong. But we managed to get it spot on into the left hander. Getting the front in is important here. Didn't quite manage to. A little bit too aggressive on the front tires. Barry goes pole position with a 113.677. Can we do anything in the, into that final sector? We go purple middle sector and we're 2.2 tenths up. But we still have to gain around 1.5 tenths to Barry's um, delta if you want to get pole position here. To the left hander there, a bit too careful on throttle. And that would have definitely cost us time into the final corner wide. Backhand steps out, costing us time again. But up to the line, it's gonna be oh, front row. Take those. And that was all we were aiming for. So pretty poor last sector for me there. Uh, definitely costing us at least a tenth. Uh, Barry nailed it there. Um, but we got what we wanted. And that was that front row. Um, you know, if you're front row, then you can play from there. But if you're P3 after the first lap, then basically the guy ahead of you has the arrest as well. And that makes it all so much more difficult. So very happy with that um, front row. And now we can fight for the win from here. You can see that strategy medium hard. And you can either do medium soft um, or medium hard if you're starting on the mediums. And then if you're starting on the softs, you can do soft medium um, or soft hard, of course. Two stop is not really a thing around here, as um, yeah, pit lane is just taking too long. So um, finishing off our formation lap now, we've heated up the tires nicely. You can see Danny Bresney there, the first guy starting on the softs. So he might be dangerous in those opening laps. As Good I said, up. softs are really thank you. Softs are really fast when they're brand new. So if Danny wants to be a factor in the race, he will have to make a lot of moves on the opening lap, get a good start. Otherwise it's going to be very tough because after around five laps the soft start to drop off pretty aggressively. So, you know, if um, someone decides to go for a medium soft strategy as well, they will have to make some serious good moves. And um, yeah, that's not going to be easy now. Lining up behind Barry Borman, it's going to be five red lights for round five of PSGO. It's light out and away we go. Initially a pretty good start, second phase slightly worse, but they're going to be side by side with Barry Borman into turn one. Josh having a little look down the inside into turn one and we're going to go down the inside of Barry and claiming that apex on the inside. Now on the exit, Barry's going to have more momentum on the outside, but we're going to have more momentum into this next left and the Barry with the inside. We're going to go around the outside. Barry pushed a little bit wide. We're going to have more momentum once again on the exit. We touch on that apex and Barry runs wide. And I decided to not go side by side into this next left hander. I felt like um, it would be better to have Barry ahead and 
you know, risking no damage there. As I just felt like I could still make moves later on in the race. And you can see through the middle sector is where the dirty air plays a big factor. But in about two laps time, DRS will be enabled. And then we can maybe get him back before the pit stop phase. You can see Danny Bresne now up to P4. Wilson Huge lost quite a few positions because Louis Welch is now up to P5. So um, Danny Bresne is straight away going for a move on Josh there in that right hander. And Danny knows that he has to be aggressive in this opening lap if he wants to be fighting for that win. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's gonna be aggressive on those softs and then go for an undercut. Because um, that's the strategy he's playing here. Now on to the end of lap 10, you can see Danny Bresne has dropped back and that's what we predicted. Those softs are dropping off aggressively and now Danny is going to be boxing this lap to go to a fresh set of hard or yeah. maybe mediums. Um, yeah, Tobin yeah. about two seconds ahead of them. Um, as Danny pits now from P4, he dropped suddenly very aggressively and that almost made Josh fall out of the arrest. The Bresne just pit. Um, but luckily for Josh, he managed to get back in. But now I'm between a McLaren Shadow Sandwich. So um, for the people who don't know what McLaren Shadow is, McLaren Shadow is the official McLaren F1 esports team. So um, yeah, this is not an uh, ideal situation for us because McLaren can play any game they want here. They can go for an undercut and I will still be stuck behind Barry because I struggled to get past Barry. Even with the D-Rest, you can see I'm pushing with the overtake button, but I'm just not close enough. And I was having a little look to try and um, put off Barry, but I just could not get closer. And Barry was not using that much ERS as well, so not an easy situation here for me. Um, because if Josh goes for the undercut, then they will get both cards ahead. And we will have to play a completely different strategy. So, um, of course, Danny has gone for the undercut as well, so he might come out behind him. Some people behind Danny went for an even earlier pit stop uh, to medium some, as the mediums can go around uh, the wall race basically. So, I, uh, you know, might not be the fastest way, but you can be very aggressive and go for an oh, undercut for track for, position. Uh, softs in the end. And as you can hear me say there, go for the softs in the end, which means 25 laps more or less. Yeah. Copy. 25 laps more or less on the mediums and then go to the softs. Um, which uh, is an uh, aggressive strategy as well. So now behind Barry, and this was mind games for me because everyone is watching my stream, um, the engineers from the other drivers, yeah, and I, I had, had to, to fake, fake everyone. everyone in, or uh, I had to fake everyone staying out. Yeah. It's probably going to be quite tight with Perez now. Um, you should be ahead of Nords. Again, I'm not 100% sure on the pit delta, we don't have the data. So yeah, I had to fake uh, the strategy, strategy there to McLaren Shadow because they were watching my stream and they were he hearing everything. So that made just my life a lot harder strategy-wise and I had to play a mind game there to fake them um, thinking they could try something different. And um, you know, if they tried to go for the undercut on Josh on that lap, they failed. Me? Undercut's about 0.6. So that's why I'm using my ERS on this lap and I'm pushing as hard as I can. Uh, simply because I want to be safe from Barry. If I come out, I basically want Danny Bresney behind me being ahead of Barry as well. Because that means I've got a little bit of a protection layer, you know. Um, because Barry will then have... Uh, sorry, Bresney will then have uh, DRS from me. Which oh, makes it a lot up. harder for Barry to overtake. But yeah, both McLaren... So. Oh. Wilson's just pit. But as you can hear, um, my engineers say they're both going medium soft, so um, we don't have to push any more with push any more with our battery. But I kind of still wanted Danny Bresne behind me, who still has at really good pace on those mediums. Even um, like 12 laps later, uh, he still had really good pace. So even if I tried to get out of the DRS, he um, he probably stayed within anyway. Yeah, Barry boxing. So. Um, yeah, I think maybe in the last five laps I could try and pull away from Danny Bresnay's DRS, but there's no point in doing that if he's only like uh, 
a little bit slower than us because I want to have Danny Bresny behind me once Barry arises, arrives on those fresh shots because I want Barry to have to use a lot of ERS and have a hard time overtaking Danny Bresne because that way um, he will have less to play with once he gets behind us and um, yeah we just need to play it smart here we need I to use stuck in traffic in the most important lap yep huge traffic behind Yoni Tormala on 20 lap, 21 lap old mediums so yeah, this is this is huge for a race. Um, as I said earlier on in the video, those softs are extremely, extremely fast for around three to four laps. And if you cannot use them in clean air, that means you're gonna be losing a lot of time. And that's exactly what's happening to Barry right now. You could see on the mini map that he was stuck in traffic. And even two laps later, he is still not past Daniel Adat, who pitted quite a bit earlier than him to softs. And on the most important laps, he did not manage to get um, clean air and pound in some extremely fast lap times. As we're getting free DRS from a ghost car, um, from a disconnected Alessio. And Barry does go fastest lap of the race there, 1.5 seconds faster than us. But, you know, there's only six laps remaining. This is not going to be easy. If he keeps gaining one and a half seconds per lap, he will be right behind us with uh, within three laps. But can see there we after two more laps end of lap 31 we are now he is 1.6 seconds behind us and he will get DRS on this lap but once again he's not going to be able to pass us on this lap on next lap I mean as well on lap 32 he won't be able to pass us because he's going to get DRS down in straight but last lap Danny Bresnay behind us 16.67 Danny Bresnay behind us has DRS so DRS um, that helps uh, Danny Bresnay as well, of course. And that way, we've got a bit of protection. So, now we've got four laps to go. And that middle sector is where, where those softs are the fastest. And Barry is once again going to be stuck for another lap. And then it's the question, will Barry be able to get past uh, Danny Bresnay? Because me and Bresnay both have been chilling a little bit with our ERS. We had no one to pass. So we're both going to be setting on 100% ERS. Barry just had a shit fight with um, with that midfield where Daniela Dat was involved and some old medium runners, and he had to use quite a bit of ERS to get past them. And you could you could hear my engineer early on in the lap say he only has 68% of his battery left, whereas we are sitting on 100% going into uh, the final corner basically. So now you can see Barry is right with Danny Bresnay, only two tenths. And this is where I really questions if he, he could still win this race. Because you can see Barry is two tenths behind Danny Bresnay. And they're going to be going side by side, surely, into turn one. You can see Barry is having a little look. And they go side. You can't see it on my screen. But they are going side by side into turn one. Bresnay managed to stay ahead. I'm so trying to give a little bit of DRS. Uh, or not DRS slipstream to uh, Danny Bresnay. Because uh, Danny is our only hope in this race. Once Barry gets past Danny, that means um, Barry is a free pass to get past us because we will have no DRS and a lot slower straight line speed. But luckily for us, Bresnay managed to stretch it one more lap and keep Barry Borman right behind him uh, for one more lap. And you can see with around two and a half laps to go, we still have 70% DRS. And Barry probably used a lot of ERS to try and have a go at um, Danny Bresnay. So even if um, Barry does manage to get past Danny Bresnay on this lap, on this straight, it means that Barry will only have one more lap um, to pass us because there's no other way to pass us than on the main straight with the help of DRS. But into the final corner, DRS. we are 1.2 seconds ahead of Barry. So even if he does pass, uh, Danny Bresnay, he won't gain that anymore uh, in the lap space because those softs are slowly. Five, five, three. I'm gonna keep Bresnay on that. Seven dogs. Seems like Copy. he has no dirty others. Even those softs will be crumbling a lot, especially in that last lap. As I said earlier on, those softs are going away very fast. And as you could hear me say a few corners ago, I'm keeping Bresnay in that 7 tenth window because this way 
He does not have dirty air in the middle sector because that's how the F1 game works. After around 7 tenths, you tend to struggle less with dirty air. And this way, Barry will still have dirty air. So Bresne has an advantage in the middle sector by not having dirty air. And then he will still have DRS on the main trade. That way, um, Bresne will be able to keep Barry behind. And that's exactly what I've been doing in the past few laps. That way, Danny Bresne has a little bit of an advantage in the middle sector which makes his life easier. And then on the main straight, um, he still has that DRS advantage. So uh, that's the way we've been playing it in the past few laps and that's how we've been playing it all the time. And this is the last lap. You can see we still 50% DRS. This pin. is when, as you can see me say that, I'm pulling the pin and that means pushing as hard as I can, creating a gap um, that is as big as possible and just absolutely sending it basically. So now seven tenths is the gap going into turn three. And Danny Bresney once again is going to be safe into the final lap. And we have, together with Danny Bresney, played this perfectly. Because we have maximized our racing position. Realistically, Danny probably could have not won uh, the race on soft to mediums. Because he lost a lot of time starting on the softs in the earlier laps. Um, or in the first stint, I, I must say. And then, of course, on the hards, we're going to be much faster in the end. Because we have less tire wear and we have fresher tires. So... We have worked this race perfectly, even though it might have not been the fastest strategy, which was medium to soft. But because we had track position, we could play together, and that's what we've done. Even though we're not teammates, of course. We, um, um, we had a um, Hungarian Minister of Defense right behind us, and that has made us win round five of PSGL. A little bit of redemption after the last race and we're gonna win our first uh -huh. race Mate, of the drive. season what a drive great work see um see you indeed so yeah just really happy with that we were not the fastest in qualifying which was barry but we've managed to win the race and crucially shanaka clay p11 which means zero points for shanaka clay i think after uh, penalty removal, Shanaka was P10, so we got one point. But that means we're only four points behind Shanaka Clay in the standings now. And we're right back into the championship fight, which is what we're aiming for this race. And now we need to build on this. Next week is going to be Austria. And that's usually a track I do pretty well on in the races. So need to try and do that again, of course, and build further on this. Hope you guys enjoyed this PSGL round five. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys want to see more and see you guys next time. Ciao.